So this is the tripod that I use in the field. It is the CT314 carbon fiber tripod. It has three legs and it has sponge grips here. And now there's a misnomer about carbon fiber, which I've discovered, and you're looking at the solution to this problem. The first misnomer is that carbon fiber does not heat up and it does not get cold. It does eventually heat up and it does eventually get cold. And what's nice about having these is that when you put it on your shoulder, when that event does occur, it's not as hot or as cold. The other thing that is nice about having these is that when you put it on your shoulder, the rigidity of the carbon fiber pole doesn't dig into your shoulder. Now the nice thing about this is how light this is. Actually the ball head is heavier than the set of sticks. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the ball head first. First thing we're going to take a look at is where you actually put the camera. Now if you notice you have a bubble level here as well as having a bubble level here. But the bubble level here is so that you can level the camera. Now the trick with using a ball head first is that you always want to have the knob facing the front and the bubble level to the back and the slit in the front. There are a couple of reasons for this. If you're using a quick release, you do not want your camera strap catching the quick release because you'll quickly release the camera and thus cause the camera to fall off. Also, by having this here, it puts the bubble level here. So you're not having to do this to see if you're level. It's right here where you need it. Now this, if you notice, there are one, two, three knobs on the ball head, and they are very oversized. Several tripods have, or ball heads rather, have four knobs. There's a reason why there are three. The problem is that the tension knob and the knob that moves the ball head are usually about the same size, if not the same size. So you can have this whole operation set up, and then if you grab the wrong knob, let me show you what happens, is that it'll fall down like this. Or you grab the wrong knob, and next thing you know, you've moved out of position. This is not something you want to do with a tripod. The whole purpose of a tripod is to lock everything into place. The tool that you need is the universal screwdriver. What you do here is you can take any coin up to a quarter that'll fit right here, you get the tension that you like, you lock that into place. I tend to like a stiff ball head, the reason being is that I can place it, and then you lock it into place. So now it won't move. So I tend to go with stiff ball heads. The reason why there is a single slot and not a dual slot is that what they found in the R&D is that a dual slot actually weakens the capability of the ball head. This ball head is capable of holding up to 88 pounds of weight. The toolkit is very important because every tool that you need, including spikes, should you decide that you would rather have spikes instead of the rubber feet, is included. You have three Allen wrenches and you have a wrench here. This wrench is designed for this. So what you can do is put this here, release the center screw, and if you notice, you have a screw that has two parts. Depending on what the screw in is for the attachment you want to put in your tripod, it's designed for that. So let's see how to use this. So what we're going to do here is we've set the screw to about the depth that we want for the tripod, which is about right there. I'm going to put this plate here, put this here, screw it in, and then with my wrench, tighten it. Now if you notice, there's a screw right here and back here. This screw uses this Allen wrench, and this is very important. You put this here. Once you have the ball head on, you want to use this screw to tighten it in to hold the ball head in place. So you have all the tools that you need. So let's take a look at the plate that actually goes in here. You notice that there are two screws here, and if we look right here, there are two indentations. What this is for is so that when this is in place, and we'll see how to do this in a moment, it won't slide out once you go into the second part of how to put this tripod head in. This is to protect you to not lose your lens, not to lose your camera. This is designed in here. These screws are here for a reason. This is all the way locked in. I move this and I get to a stop. What I'm going to do is move it forward a little bit, pull, and then twist it more. Built in here, 
is a stopping mechanism. What you're seeing here is that this is now fully extended. Now what I'm gonna do is twist this until I hear a lock. Now if we look, let me lock this for a second, right there, you see that there is a white guideline. This white guideline is very important to make sure that you're lined up. So I'm gonna line this up. Now what I want you to see is that once we've locked it, I cannot lose this. It's not going to go anywhere. This is a safety mechanism so that you can lock this, and then when I lock this in place, it doesn't go anywhere. Now, I can set this where I want, and then twist it, and I'm done. And what I want you to see is that no matter what odd angle I put this at, once I'm locked in place, the camera's not going anywhere. This operation is the most important aspect of a tripod, is how stable the tripod is and how stable the connection to the tripod it is. And it's very important to keep in mind that with a tripod, you never want to extend this center tube. When you buy a tripod, the way in which you should pick a tripod for you is to extend the legs all the way out and have it be at eye height. And the last set of legs that you ever want to extend out are the bottom ones. That you want to be able to get 90% to 100% there with the thickest part and that this is just for adjustment because you're only as stable as the weakest link. And if you have very thin legs at the bottom, again, it's not designed to hold the weight of the camera. So when you pick a tripod, it's always at eye level so that when I'm done, what this should be is that when it's fully extended, it should be as close to here as possible so that it's at its most stable. You never want to raise the center pole. The reason why this center pole is here is for this. Let me point this out too. You see this here? This is a very important thing to have on a tripod. You put your camera bag here and it becomes a weight that holds the tripod down even more. So to flip this, what you do is you release this. And I now am able to shoot at ground level with the tripod. That's why a center column is useful but you never want to extend the center column up. I tend to use a smaller center column for just that reason, but the advantage of a longer center column is you can see how much more stable I am with this longer center column because I'm still at a tripod. You can, with these releases, extend your tripod out this way. But the problem here is that if you extend these legs further out, then you get a little bow. So you want to try and keep this as close to this configuration is possible. And again, by holding on to this, you see how much control I have on my tripod by simply working it this way. I can get any shot I want. I can get right down here. I can photograph that right there. I'm totally and completely stable. You have these releases here, which allow you to extend to here, to here, or to here. The beauty of this too, is the ease of use with these oversized knobs. One of the nice things about this tripod is also the increased surface areas of all of the things on a tripod that you want to have surface area on. If we look at the entire spider operation, which is this area here, the oversized column lock, you see how big these things are? This is great if you're in a cold environment and you need to grip on something. You're wearing gloves makes it so that this is more manageable when you have a glove on. Same thing here, these are all oversized. The ease of twisting this out and then locking this, it's all designed to be quick and fast. The other advantage of this type of leg versus the release leg is that you will never be bitten. Another advantage of these release joints and the way in which they work is what causes the tension. Many, many tripod manufacturers use a, a, a fiber-based or um, basically cardboard sleeve to, to cause the tension. Well, that's all well and good if it's dry. But if it's not dry and it's moist, what happens is that gets wet and you have some problems. There is a plastic sleeve here which will never get wet. And even if it does get wet, it will never soak. So you have, again, for inclement weather, a tripod designed to stand up to the weather. 
So these little things add up into a big thing. And it's, it's the little things, it's the attention to detail that I really, really like about the Enduro tripod. It's also an 8x thickness carbon fiber tripod set of sticks and column. So what you have is the sturdiest, most rigid, lightweight tripod you can get. And that is the Enduro carbon fiber tripod. And trust me when I tell you, this tripod endures me.